and suiting up for the symphony. We'll find out why this conductor is getting all wired up and what that has to do with these black boxes in the hands of the audience. Now this next story isn't about going electric with music, although it does involve getting wired up. Earlier this summer, the Boston Symphony took part in an unusual experiment, one that tried to answer the question of whether live music is enjoyed more than recorded music. How do you get at a question like that? With a whole lot of sensors. This isn't a typical tune-up for the Boston Symphony Orchestra. Two. Channel two. They're wired. Looking good. More wired than usual. When it starts logging, it'll just vibrate ever so slightly for a minute and make a small beep. Okay. So don't be alarmed okay. by that. No problem. And then it should stop doing anything. Okay. <laughs> so it won't do anything during the concert? That's our that's it. our plan. I've got about 20 people here today, and my job is uh, just to let them do their thing. I'll be wiring some people up because uh, as the lead experimenter, I want to get my, my hands dirty. While Keith Lockhart conducts the symphony, researchers will be conducting an experiment on him and on everyone else in the hall. What is this monitor over here? That's for, this. this is for GSR, excitement level. GSR, this is for excitement level. We should, we should all have these for our dates. Today, for the uh, first time, we're gonna be collecting psychobiological data from the conductor, the orchestra, and the audience members as a way to have a window into the brain, the musical brain, the way that emotion is communicated from the conductor's baton to the fingers and hearts of the musicians and then to the hearts and minds of the audience. Researchers plan to measure the telltale signs of emotion during this concert. They're looking for changes in things like heart rate, sweat, all in response to live music. So the stuff I think we should, we should, we should. To track the age-old signs of arousal, they're using 21st century technology. These sensors are made for NASA. Were they? Conductor Keith Lockhart will be wearing a special jacket and armband containing sensors. They'll track his heart rate, breathing, muscle tension, and galvanic skin response. Galvanic skin response is a way to measure arousal through sweat. As you get more uh, emotional, uh, you tend to sweat a little bit, and that increases the conductance of the skin, and so you can actually measure an increase in the conductivity. Musicians and audience volunteers will also wear armbands or finger bands to measure their galvanic skin response. You're going to have to hold your left hand more or less still during the concert. Just rest it on my lap or something. Yeah. And uh, they're perfectly harmless. There's no electricity traveling in them. Of course, all these measurements are passive. The body's response to emotional arousal is involuntary. The main thing I'm worried about, I have my children out in the audience, and if they start screaming, I think my level of, of stress will go up. The researchers also want a record of people's conscious feelings about, well, their feelings in this concert. That's why some audience members are getting these devices, slider boxes. They're going to tell us, with the motion of the, the lever, the knob, what emotions they're feeling. If they're feeling a lot of emotion from the performance, they move it up. If they're feeling more calm or serenity, they move it down. This is a different kind of measure. It's a conscious and explicit measure. The digital data from all these boxes and sensors in the orchestra and audience are fed both wirelessly and by cable into a computer. It's quite the living laboratory. This is an opportunity to take the laboratory into the concert hall. It's going to give us a much more accurate reading of what it's like to really experience music as most of us experience it in the real world. But the real live experience is only part one. Scientists also want to test people's emotional response to the same concert, but a videotape version. So it's sort of the question of live versus Memorex, uh, right? That it, does the recording have the same emotional impact on the viewer as a live orchestral setting? So it's off to another concert lab. This time, it's the Tana Schulich Concert Hall in Montreal, where another set of volunteers is being outfitted with armbands. No, you don't do anything, but in a minute or two, And slider boxes. You'll be continuously reading how you are feeling in the music, how strong the emotional force is, not how positive or negative it is. We're not interested in what you think the composer is trying to communicate to you as music, as an emotional reaction. What are you really feeling? The 60 or so volunteers in the Montreal audience 
will watch a high-definition video and audio version of the Boston concert. You're actually seeing it life-size. If you're sitting in the M Montreal audience, the conductor, Keith Lockhart, is, is still 5 foot 10 on the screen. And we have the highest quality audio recording we could get from microphones placed throughout Boston Symphony Hall so that we can replicate, insofar as possible, that, that experience of being in Symphony Hall. The experiment goes off without a single wrong note. Now the real work begins. So we have to go back and analyze the music itself, get out the scores. That's where our music uh, theory colleagues come in handy. This takes many months to do all of this. Uh, unfortunately, we can't show you the results right now here on the screen. Conductor Keith Lockhart is confident about the results. He's sure live experiences elicit more powerful emotions and that this makes them better. I think any of us know that we feel different going and watching the Sox in a uh, in, on the, in the, you know, the third baseline Fenway Park than we do watching it on TV. But researcher Dan Levitin, who also happens to be a musician, isn't so sure. One doesn't always need to hypothesize that treatment A is going to be better than treatment B. One can say that they would be different. That's a hypothesis. So our hypothesis is that the live and the broadcast or taped version of the concert will have some similarities and some differences, and that's what we want to know. 